Okay, so, um... Wait. Are we... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Digi Bros, everybody. <laughs> Awkward intro. <laughs> <laughs> Victor just said, wait, so, um, like, in the, like before we started the episode, I was, I was gonna, like, uh, continue my story without introducing <laughs> anything. <laughs> Alright, All right. let's, uh, Welcome yeah. the fuck back to DigiBros. Savannah. Yeah. DigiBros Savannah, like, it's a Survivor Digibros series. DigiBros hashtag Savannah. <laughs> Next time on uh. DigiBros Savannah. <laughs> Fuck my ass! Oh, oh sharks! <laughs> Alright. Son of a bitch, I got fucking paralyzed. Continue your okay. stories. Alright, so so day one we went to a bunch of fun novelty shops and like that was cool. At the end of Hold day on. one the direct like you you like made a like a gesture with your hand like fucking whatever when you said <laughs> shops. Like <laughs> shops. Like like shops what? are like some like shitty like ah oh, fucking shops. <laughs> this uh, is really weird. I don't, I don't know. Uh, all right, I was fucking. See, I was trying to like introduce that to like get me on a roll, of, like a train of thought, and then you fucking you just shat all over my 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 flow. I'm sorry. The way you said shops uh, is really funny. Like it was so derisive. Like what shops are like the nominally shafts. Nominally shafts. Continue your train of thought. All right. So that night. We went on, like, uh, a haunted house tour, where it's like there was a, a tour guide, and she'd take us, like, basically around, like, a few blocks, where there's just, like, all of this haunted shit in a close radius, and she'd just, like, you know, tell the story behind the building, and it, it was real spooky. But there was one story that I stuck with me. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> it was real you spooky. You never just fucking talk. <laughs> Talk to anyway, you after. there was one story that has stuck with me. It was a story of a guy who was basically like, he, he got in some kind of fight with his wife and then like, like killed her or something, but he kind of got away with it. And then like, after that, he became like a really serious, like drunk and like a womanizer. And like, he was basically just like a town fucking douchebag. And then like, he had ended up like staying, like this girl was staying with him. And I guess like, her family was kind of like some people you shouldn't fuck with, and then like they they had warned him not to fuck with this girl and like like don't sleep with her. And I guess eventually he ended up like taking advantage of her. And then her brothers come and they they tie this dude to a porch and they beat the living shit out of him and they fucking castrate him. Jesus. And they bring the dude's beaten body inside and they find his dick and balls in like a pocket with like a warning like like this dipshit shouldn't have fucked with our daughter. And then he basically like. The, the family that he was, like, the son of uh, wouldn't take him to a hospital because they didn't want it to become known that, like, their son was, like, a fucking disgrace. And so they were, like, trying to, like, have this doctor come in from out of town to, to treat him. And, uh, but he ended up dying before the doctor could show up. And so his ghost, like, haunts that house now, and it's, like, appeared to all these people. And I just imagined... It's like my, ghost. my mental no, my mental image of him every time, which like she kept telling these stories of the people encountering the ghost, and I I didn't even think about the fact that I was imagining it this way, uh -huh. but I just imagined the ghost appearing before people, holding its severed dick and balls <laughs> in its hand, <laughs> and that was just the funniest fucking thing to me. And so now like, I just <laughs> I look at hope and I just do the the <laughs> hand out gesture, like like I'm the the ghost with the dick and balls in its hand. And it was funny because that night, like, I actually ended up, like, you ever have where, where the concept of a scary movie, like, really gets to you and, like, you can't stop thinking about it and so you do end up kind of getting, like, creeped out? Right, yeah. And, like, I was starting to feel that about that story because of my, my vivid image of, like, this bloody dude holding his stick and balls. <laughs> it was, like, really creeping me out. This is, this is <laughs> funny because there's a... It, you're making me think now of this one album where the cover uh, has a guy where he he's just oh, completely Jesus. castrated. Like, uh, it's just like a bloody lump where right. his dick and balls would be. But anyways, like, when we're leaving, we're supposed to say, like, you know, they, they do this just to spook you out. But they're like, oh, sometimes ghosts will, like, latch on to people and follow them home. So you have to say, like, the dead uh, remain with the dead, like, before you enter your house or whatever, like, to make sure a ghost didn't follow you. And, like, you know, the whole time... During this this ghost adventure, like 
of course, me and Hope were, like, being super snarky and sarcastic, and, like, I was being, like, snarky and making fun of shit the whole time, and I'm like, I'm gonna be the asshole who a ghost follows home because I was being a snarky bitch the whole time. Right. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I, I got followed home by a ghost. I'm, I'm totally fucked. <laughs> and then, like, like, uh, the woman we were staying with, like, had, had joked that, uh, if I felt like a ghost followed me home, I could sleep with, uh, the rosary that was in the room I was staying in. Mm -hmm. Cause I was just, like, sleeping in some room on an air mattress. And then, like, I'm going to bed, and I'm just, like, totally fucking creeped out. And I'm like, alright, I'm gonna play some music. And so I start playing music off my phone, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna leave the fucking light on, cause I'm freaked out. I don't wanna fucking deal with this shit. I don't wanna be in the dark. And I'm sitting there, I still can't sleep, so I grab the rosary, and I put it around my neck. So I, I go to bed with the lights on, playing music, and sleeping with the fucking rosary because I'm afraid of ghosts. And it was the weakest fucking thing. <laughs> it took me like, like two fucking hours to get to bed. That is great. It was pretty fantastic. And I told everyone the next day and they made fun of me, but it was great. I'm glad you're <laughs> such a There's a story. There, that's puss. a story I fucking remembered. I totally forgot about all the, yeah. like, why I, why I did that. That's pretty great. But the whole time, I'm just like, I feel like such a fucking dipshit. Because I know that I'm not gonna get attacked by ghosts. But there's that part of me that is just like, you're fucked. Like, like the second you you start to doubt that it, that it will happen is when it's gonna happen, so you right. might as well take precautions. It's called being too genre savvy <laughs> for your own good. There you go. It's cause it's like, as soon as I go, ah, oh, ghosts aren't real, that's when they fucking become real and they right. fuck me. Uh. <laughs> I definitely have, uh, I too am like weirdly... I'm very superstitious about yeah, weird shit. Yeah, weirdly superstitious. <laughs> Considering that, like, I'm a complete pragmatist, and, like, exactly. it's like I don't, I don't believe even fucking, in any of this I don't shit. Believe, in, believe in the fucking afterlife or any of this shit, but the second that, like, the, the tropes line up, all of a sudden, like, <laughs> I, I can't suspend my disbelief. Well, like, I, I guess a lot of it's, like, our mom super, like, will always be like, don't or jinx it. Or I do it suspend and... my dif disbelief, I should say. My mom's a total, like, knock yeah. on wood. She's very superstitious. Don't, don't do that. She always like, has her know. fucking omens and shit and, like, her, right. her fucking 314 or whatever the fuck that is. 318, I 318. Uh, <laughs> she or... sees numbers and places and things like that. Yeah, maybe it's 314. Maybe 318 is stone cold. No, that's 316. <laughs> I don't know. It's three something. Yeah. Um... Yeah, my mom's very superstitious, and a lot of that rubbed up on yeah, us Yeah, definitely. Up. Where I'm just like... Like, I feel like as, as soon as I doubt it, that's when it's gonna get me. Yeah. Well, so, cause that's so how it is in horror well. movies. Exactly. That's the whole point. Like, that's that's where they, they try to sell you, is like, oh... <laughs> so I was scared shitless that night. And also feeling like a total fucking jackass. Sleeping with a rosary. And I was, my logic behind it was like... If I'm gonna believe in ghosts tonight, I might as well believe in Jesus, too. <laughs> that makes uh, sense. He is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Well, is he... There, or is... Yeah. Something like... I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of them. Don't, don't quote me He's on Bible ghost. shit. But yeah. That was, that was day one. I believe. So, yeah. uh... What happened the next day? The next day... Was Halloween! Woo! That's right, I can, I can, <laughs> can talk about, uh... Where the fuck? The, where did, oh, what okay, the, we gotta go back. Okay. So what are you doing? Stand on the switches. I'm like, wait, there's four switches. Okay. So we spend most of the day, like, going to Party City, because, like, Hope's mom was still working on her costume that she was making. And, like, I didn't have a costume at all, because, like, I didn't have any money before we left. So I'm, we go to Party City... And they're just, there really isn't shit. Like, the costumes were all fucking lame. I was gonna be, like, some morph suit dude or some shit. And then I find this king's hat. And then it, the idea dawns on me, because we go to, uh, to conventions with this couple who, who's this friends with This story is not gonna work. Is it? It's too specific, I think. What? I can 
tell the story. All right, fine. You can tell the story. <laughs> well, because no one's going to know what your costume looks like unless we post I'm just, a picture It's of just it. a hat and a scepter and a generic blue shirt. I can describe what the costume looks <laughs> okay, like. Okay, if you're confident, then go ahead. The, the costume was nothing. That was why it was funny. <laughs> because, basically, we go to the... We go to con me and Hope go to cons with this couple. It's her friend Alicia and this guy named John. And like this guy John is like the most like stoic dude. Like he he has a good time, but you you never he like barely ever cracks a smile. He just always looks really serious. He doesn't emote. Yes, he doesn't emote. And one year him and his wife go to Otakon as like uh the Ice King and I don't remember what she was. She was like the the cat thing the from the Fiona shit <laughs> but anyway he was the ice king and then the next year in the catalog like the cosplay catalog he was in there as the ice king it, even though his costume was like really like shitty and like randomly put together and so they started calling him John the cosplay king and so my halloween costume was i wore like this generic navy blue shirt that he's wearing in like like half of his fucking Facebook pictures and I, I got a King Scepter and a hat and I called myself John the Cosplay King as as an homage to this guy and we sent him a picture and it was hilarious. <laughs> so he knows you. Oh this. yeah. Well we, we sent a picture to his wife and it was like guess who he is? You know, guess who I am? She was like are you John the Cosplay King? I'm like fuck yeah I am. Excellent. Uh, it was a very fun Halloween practical joke. At first I felt super stupid and lame because my costume was so thrown together, but then I'm on this fucking... Because what we did for the rest of Halloween was we did a Halloween pub crawl. And like excellent most people were plan. in lame costumes, so I didn't feel Very bad. Very excellent plan. Because of course, Hope was in this just super fucking wonderful witch costume that she put together. Really, she wasn't a witch from anything. She was just like a cute witch, and it was just like super hot and awesome, and I loved it. No one wants <laughs> to hear about that detail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm saying that because she's listening to this. <laughs> oh, okay. And I I, I want to reiterate to her, which I have a million times, that she was like awesome in that costume, <laughs> and I loved it. It changed my perspective on high heels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked high heels, but now I do. <laughs> it, I, Impressive. It's a nice costume. Didn't the uh, did the Dead Master cosplay she did have high heels? Yeah, it did. That was a long time ago though, so I don't know. So you didn't you didn't know yet? You uh, you you weren't privy. <laughs> this costume was great. Huh. But yeah, we did the Halloween pub crawl. We basically went to like, like quote unquote haunted bars. It was really like there weren't really ghost stories as much as it was like murder stories. But we'd, we'd go to a bar, we'd get a drink, we'd go outside, and, like, the, the tour guide tells us a story. I didn't pay attention to most of the stories because I was, like, you know, kind of drunk. <laughs> like, looking around, just, like, holding on to hope. It was a good romantic time. The most time. Uh, exciting thing you told me about Georgia, you can walk around without Yeah, you can walk outside. around, you know, with open containers of liquor, just, like, a cup of booze, and it's no problem. Everyone's fucking doing it. It's pretty great. No brown paper now, bag or any they, of that did shit. Did they, in fact, tell you that that was the case? Yeah, they did. was it just did. that you observed No. Okay. You, you can just do that. <laughs> it was, like, one of the first things they told me is you can, you can walk around with alcohol here and, and, and nobody gives a shit. Public drunkenness everywhere. Ugh. Pretty oh, cool. <laughs> the, <laughs> there was a, a fun climax to the, uh, the Halloween pub crawl. But basically, like, me and Hope were just drunk, having a fucking great time the, the entire time. And then, like, we're, we're leaving and going to, to the car, and I really have to fucking pee. Like, I desperately need to pee. And I can't find a restroom anywhere. Which, surprisingly, another thing that you can get away with in Savannah that you can't get away with here is, like, you can just go into a restaurant and use the bathroom, and no one gives a shit. Whereas in Virginia Beach... No one fucking lets you use their bathroom anywhere. Like, you have to be a paying customer uh, or they don't have a restroom a, or something. If it's a restaurant, I mean, yeah. there's plenty of but, I mean, places you I have, can use the bathroom. I just went into, like, a place or a bar and just, like, took a piss and, and they didn't care. Like, I thought that was pretty different. I don't think it's too big a deal. Like, most places don't have locked if bathrooms. If you try to go in somewhere at the oceanfront, there's not a single fucking bathroom anywhere. Well, okay, you cannot find a bathroom at the oceanfront. That's front. not true because that, that really awesome bathroom is there. 
The one that's like the best bathroom in the United States, the one that's all darkly uh-huh. lit and shit. We went there. But was were you, you know, Victor. attending the restaurant when you went me, there? Me when uh when um when Cider and Jeff from the pub crawl visited. Uh-huh. We went down to the ocean front and we literally just went to that bathroom. Oh my god. Mom dropped us off in front of the building. <laughs> well, maybe you can the and three I just of us haven't tried it. walked in enough. and used the bathroom and walked out. I feel like from my experience you can't you can't get away with that. And a lot. you know they ruined that bathroom because Amazing. they put in a fucking guy in there. One uh, of those uh what's it called? What are they called? Hand towel guys. Yeah, they have a name. Uh, <laughs> uh shit eaters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what they're called. They're annoying. Anyways, and that doesn't matter. Let me finish my really story. really awkward to take a piss. I don't care about bathroom. the greatest bathroom we, in America. Because we wanted to hang out. Well, because <laughs> that bathroom is like, the whole point of going there is that it's really cool looking. So you want to like check it out. Yeah. But you got this fucking guy there. And it's like, <laughs> none of us were, you know, we're three socially awkward nerds. None of us uh, were going to stand around a bathroom and check it out with some fucking guy right over our shoulder. Yes. You know, fucking offering hand towels and shit. And it's like, dude, I'm not... I'm not tipping you. I hope you don't think I'm tipping you. Fucking get the fuck away from me, dude. I don't even tip fucking people who actually do shit for me. Uh, I mean, I, I do, but, like, weekly. <laughs> Anyways, know. I really got to piss. And I can't find anywhere to use a bathroom. And the whole time, they're just going, like, dude, just piss on the street like no one will notice. Because they're all fucking <laughs> drunk, too. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking piss on the street. Because anytime I do some MC shit ride? like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime I do some shit like that, I am the one who gets caught. Right. Like, anyone could get away with that but me, I will be caught. Yeah. But we're about to get in the fucking car, and I sit in the car, and I'm like, no, I have to pee too fucking bad, and we're in a parking garage. <laughs> and so I get out of the car, I, I go and I piss behind our car. And I'm like trying to, trying to squat down and fucking like aim my fists. And there's just like people looking around all over the place. I'm like, I feel like the biggest fucking idiot right now. But everyone was telling me to get out and, and piss in this parking garage. And I thought that was pretty fucking hilarious. It reminded me of this fucking episode of Seinfeld where like they're trapped in a parking garage and like Kramer has to take a piss and then he like immediately gets arrested. And I was like, I'm gonna get fucking arrested taking a piss in a parking garage, cause that's my luck, but I did it, and I made it. It was very clean. You know there's a line in uh, the song Clink by Death Grips where he's like, com- the whole song is him complaining about the police, and there's one part where he's like, they keep harassing me when I'm pissing in the middle of the street! It's like, uh, maybe you shouldn't be pissing in the middle of the street, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a Brando thing to do, though. I've I've watched, I have seen Brando piss in the middle of the street, where we were out yes. for a walk uh, <laughs> at, like, 2 in the morning or so. It truly does not And he was just fuck. like, I have to pee, and he just fucking pissed <laughs> right in the middle of the street. Saw a homeless dude fucking pissing on the subway in New York, man. He didn't give a fuck, he just whipped that shit out. Did anyone stop him? Fucking no. He was having a good-ass time. That motherfucker looked happy. He looked happy as fuck. Hey, Vic, if you get desensitized to dick, does that mean you're dick sensitized? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Anyways. Next time on Digi Yeah, Bros. fuck it. Uh, possibly more stories from Savannah, and maybe bit. I'll talk about lunch. And we'll probably fight Day Rolay again, because it's about that time. <laughs>